Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering EMC World 2015. Brought to you by EMC, Brocade, and VCE. Welcome back to EMC World, everybody. This is theCUBE, I'm here with Stu Miniman. My name is Dave Vellante. Praveen Akaraju is here. He is the CEO of VCE. Praveen, great to see you again. Absolutely, great to be here. Thanks for coming on, and uh, big day yesterday. You were part of the keynote. You made the yeah. highlight reel today, yeah. I saw. <laughs> Looking good up there. So, um, and life as part yeah. of EMC now. Yes. So give us the update, how are things? Yeah, you know, well, you, you saw a little bit of uh, what we were up to over the past six months since we came into EMC, um, you know, on stage yesterday. It's been, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, uh, it's been just kind of keep keep the focus, keep going. Weblocks continue to evolve. Uh, you know, the business continues to grow. Uh, but, you know, I think as we talked about yesterday, we do see the converged infrastructure market mainstreaming and evolving, right? And uh, what we announced yesterday really was uh, how we see sort of the future structure of the converged infrastructure market. And being in EMC really allows us to kind of take that broader lens, if you will. Yeah, P Praveen, before we dig into the, the, yeah. the tech, I'm wondering if you yeah. can comment on the big news of the industry in the week, yeah. is John Chambers, after 20 years, is stepping down as CEO. He's going right. to be executive chairman. Right. You know, Chuck Robbins is now involved. You know, yeah. just personally, you know, you worked for Cisco for many years yes. in VCE. Just yeah. what, what's your take? Yeah, I know it's great. I mean, I know Chuck for a long time. Uh, you know, he's, he's, he's a great guy. I mean, he's, well, a couple of things, right? Uh, he's extremely well connected to the customers. You know, he ran commercial for a while, then he ran Americas before he took on the global sales role and then his new role. You know, what I always found with Chuck was, uh, you know, for a sales guy, he was very technical, right? So he used to have some pretty good engineering conversations. So, you know, I'm pretty excited to, uh, to see him in that role. And I think uh, we exchanged some texts in the morning yesterday and, uh, you know, it should be should be a fun ride for him. Well, I, I don't know Chuck, but I said the same thing. I said, okay, so sales guy. Yeah. But you know, Chambers is a sales guy. But he yeah. had a deep respect for technology. You're yeah. saying Chuck same way. And oh yeah, you know, we would technical. basically talk about product architectures and and things like that. When I was back at Cisco, I used to run a couple of product lines, and you know, uh, he would challenge me when I say, well, why aren't you selling my stuff, right? And tell, <laughs> well, tell me what, why is it uh, why is it better? So, uh, really, uh, I I do think um, he brings a unique blend of. You know, obviously execution in the field, but also pretty good in-depth understanding of technology, which I think uh, you know Cisco clearly will will tap into as they transition. Now it's a pretty major transition the company is going through and the industry is going through. So how has life uh, now that you're part of EMC yeah. changed? Um, I, I'm sure from a customer standpoint, you know yeah. they're not seeing any big difference, but yeah. but what is it what has it done in terms of whether it's your strategic plan, your operating you know mode, maybe. Give us the update on that. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, really, I think what EMC has allowed us to do is, uh, you know, they have left us alone in a lot of ways. Because I think, you know, they recognize, you know, we have a winning formula, right? We have, uh, you know, the trust of our customers. Um, and, you know, we have been able to create this market and be able to provide leadership and thought leadership in this marketplace. So what EMC's really done is they've consolidated all of converged infrastructure under VCE. So they brought the V-Specs, the V-Specs blue products under uh, under VCE. So now we have sort of a unified strategy and, and vision to the market for converged infrastructure. They've also consolidated the global solutions team, which essentially is where you have solutions like the enterprise hybrid cloud and big data into one team. So we think about really the evolution of converged infrastructure horizontally in terms of you know different instantiation of hyper-converged and, and different platforms, but also vertically in terms of Different pieces of infrastructure integrated into the stack. So, so that's kind of you know the the way we we've evolved, if you will, from a thought process perspective, being inside EMC. Yeah, Praveen, you know we've spent a lot of time at EMC World every year talking to the yeah. solutions group. So, yeah. I wonder if you could talk about the kind of the, the difference between a solution and yeah. productizing something that. Yeah. Something I think I see, you know, with solutions reporting to you, yeah. people underestimate the difference between what was the IBM Redbook, which yeah. was a great tool for you know a long time in the industry, versus Versus, right. you know, something that I can just deliver easily and fast. Right. Like what you've done with VCE. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think in a lot of ways, our genesis was in that solutions sort of, you know, space, right? We started off when VCE did, initially started off, it was, you know, hey, let's kind of put this recipe together uh, and, and maybe, you know, we can execute as a reference architecture and see how where this goes. What we found was, 
Uh, well, first, it was, it's extremely hard to you know, deploy solutions at scale in a consistent manner unless you, you know, start to build a lot more rigor and process and a product around it, which is how the WeBlock essentially came about. So, you know, I think when you look at what the solutions team's doing, I mean, they, do they, they, they abstract tremendous amount of complexity. Enterprise hybrid cloud, I'm sure you guys have done the double click on it, right? I mean, it brings together the entire VMware stack, the connectivity to the cloud, even things like firewalls, and being able to bring all of that together and get a customer to have it on a, on a V-Block, get up and running, right, in 28 days once the infrastructure is installed, that is revolutionary. So, it's a lot of heavy lifting. It goes back down to the fundamental thesis, which is, it is about simplifying the complexity in the IT environments, right? That, in, that then unlocks speed, it unlocks efficiencies, it unlocks cost savings. Without necessarily right. ripping in your, and replacing the processes right. around them. I mean, you did a lot of work on this with, yeah. with David, so yeah, we've we more than double clicked on that, didn't yeah. we, Stu? Yeah, yeah, no, I, absolutely. And the other big thing I see now is your announcement this week. Yeah. Um, I wonder if VCE was a separate company, would yeah. the VX rack actually be a V-Specs because it yeah. might not fit under the VCE umbrella yeah. if it was kind of external yeah, today. Yeah, I mean, I think the other thing that obviously being in EMC has now done me is to be able to kind of think about the market space right outside of the construct of you know three companies and, and the products and technologies in that three companies, right? So, you know, for us the V block is going to be our flagship platform. It is what we're going to make our bread and butter on every day of the week, right? And, and uh, that's going to continue to be a Cisco architecture. So we're going to get the latest UCS, latest Nexus, incorporate that with EMC and VMware. However, now we've created a separate category which you know it goes after a different space. It's a you know white box architectures, completely software defined, allows us to bring in the power of EMC's technologies and scale I/O and the federation technologies from VMware and go after a different segment of the market. So I think that that's that's the evolution. So in thinking about um, what's going on in the marketplace, you can't not look at what's going on with hyperconverged. Everybody's talking yes, about software defined. Yeah. So. What's your strategy there? What's the play there? Talk yeah. about that a little bit. No, I think hyperconverged is, uh, you know, it, it's a it's a great uh, value proposition to the customer, right? Uh, it's it's super simple, you know, it's very compact, you know, you just kind of roll these things and go. So particularly if you got like, you know, a hundred, kind of drop one of these, it comes up, self manages, gets the applications up and running, right? Um, so when we think about it, I think from our perspective, we have seen a lot of hyperconverged deployments in parallel with vBlocks and data centers. That's sort of the, the state of play, if you will, today. So uh, vSpecs Blue is our sort of entry into this marketplace. It leverages Evo, uh, Evo Rail. You heard Pat talk about it. We talked about it yesterday. Um, we have a pretty robust roadmap on that, you know, capabilities coming as well as you know working with our partners to really simplify the go-to-market. So early days of that product, but you know our goal is absolutely to establish it as yeah. a premium hyperconverged appliance. And then the racks essentially brings together the engineered system concept and the experience, right, to build data center scale systems with the simplicity of the hyperconverged building blocks. Right? That's really where we saw a market opportunity. Um, I want to ask you about management and orchestration. You guys made some investments uh, you know, over the last 18, 24 yep. months. Absolutely. Um, and that was really your first sort of homegrown yeah. product. Yeah. Uh, talk about the importance of management and orchestration. Is that, how much of a competitive differentiator is that yeah. for you and why is that? Yeah, no, management orchestration is critical, particularly as we go into you know, some of these more uh, you know, scale out type architectures because we need to be able to, and Pat said it well today, right? You got to automate. Right, you have to automate the ability to provision the infrastructure, to manage the infrastructure, to get telemetry out of the infrastructure, right? There might still be a human element to kind of decision making, right? And you know, in some in, in some instances you might trust that, but I, I always think there'll be there might probably be an element of human uh, you know element in the decision making. But you want to really dramatically simplify the ability to roll out and scale this infrastructure. So, you know, when we originally started this journey, we started with a vision product, which essentially was more about telemetry, getting information, you know, flags, policies, right, utilization rates and such like, and plugging it to vCenter so you can click on a vBlock and see what's going on in it. So what we're now doing as we evolve into VXRacks is we're going to take vision, a lot of great IP there, a lot of good experience and roadmap, and plug it in with some of the other intellectual property that EMC has developed and acquired over the past couple of, I would say, months, right, to build a truly uh, you know, comprehensive management orchestration system 
for hardware, right? There's another management orchestration system at a, you know, at a, uh, we realize at a, you know, UCS director level. What we're talking about is a hardware infrastructure management orchestration layer. Praveen, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about vScale, because I, I look at what happens with vScale, and it actually helps for me. I mean, eventually, I think the vision yeah. should be pull together, I've got vBlocks, yeah. I might have those extra compute and storage nodes, and I even hyper-converge, right. whether it be the vSpecs or, yes. or the VX rack, and it can pull all those together, turning yeah. it from products to a platform that's extensible. Absolutely. You know, this is our long-term vision of a unified data center, right? So the first instantiation of vScale allows us to be able to work with, you know, add more storage capacity. So one of our customers came to us and said, hey, I love the vBlocks, but you know what? If I want to add more storage, I got to buy a new vBlock, and that's a problem, right? So vScale allows you to be able to add more storage capacity to the existing vBlock as you go. So that was the first phase of vScale. The second phase of vScale is to enable sort of scale out of vRacks, right? VXRacks we saw yesterday, those thousand nodes. They're going to be connected into that data center fabric, and Cisco Nexus 9000 is a great fabric switch for us to be able to do that. The third phase is what you were talking about, which is mixing and matching these into what we call a unified data center. So I think that's the journey we're on. Uh, again, the goal is to kind of create the right architectural constructs. You know, the management orchestration, the, the data center fabric, right, the, the different pieces and puzzles of converged infrastructure to be able to build that unified data center vision. Let me talk about the brief time we have remaining, just a competitive landscape. Um, you guys, and actually, you know, I, I correct myself, I say, you, I always say you yeah. guys and Oracle were first, but really Teradata was kind of the first right. way, a couple decades ago, but, but you and Oracle, different strategies, and then everybody sort of else came into the yeah. marketplace. You're leading, the numbers sure. you know, show that. Um, talk about the competitive landscape, where do you win, yeah. you know, where, where don't you win, yeah. and are you, where, where yeah. are you com what's your comfort zone, really? Yeah. You know, I think uh, when we were uh, in our, uh, you know, sort of in the past uh, life, I guess, you know, post uh, our free this announcement yeah. we made on Monday, um, you know, we were very much focused on, you know, classic data center tier one kind of use cases and workloads, right? Uh, you know, customers would look at the vBlock and say, hey, here's a great foundational building block for my SAP transformation, right? For my ERP, for my exchange, right? The applications that you're used to in a classic data center. And, and, and we would basically, you know, the hyper space was something that we never really paid a lot of attention to. We knew there was a lot of, you know, attention and traction in that marketplace. Uh, EMC had just announced VSpecs Blue, right? But that was an area that we had uh, we, we hadn't really sort of really thought through a lot. So we knew uh, customers would come to us and say, we love the fact that we have this building block in the data center, but you're missing a piece of the puzzle. So we would ex explicitly stay out of those markets. So I think now with the strategy of blocks, racks, and appliances, now we have the ability to go after and, and tell the full story, right? So I feel much better now from a broader competitive perspective. There's no other player in the marketplace today that has that comprehensive a vision and the experience and more importantly the trust of the customers. So, you know, when I look at it competitively, we have a lot of competitors in different, in different, uh, I guess, spaces in the block stretch supply space. Nobody's got all of them, right? So I feel pretty good about where we're going to be positioned. All right, Praveen, we got to go. We got to leave yeah. it there. Thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Thank it's always you. a pleasure. Absolutely. Great to see you again. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Guys. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. We're live from EMC World 2015. We'll be right back. <laughs>